King David might have had some problems during his reign, but ultimately it was a time when Israel became strong and exerted a mighty influence for good. David would abdicate though, and his son Solomon would reign in his place. Solomon also started off his reign in a strong fashion. He visited the site of the tabernacle in Gibeon and was asked there by God what he wanted during his reign. His reply was that he wanted to have wisdom and understanding, a gift that was given to him in abundance. Even though David wanted to build the temple, he was told by God that he couldn't build it and that his son Solomon would build it instead. Ever since the Israelites had left Egypt, it had always been the desire of God to have a dwelling place with his people. Exodus 25 verse 8 says, Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell amongst them. Every aspect of the tabernacle they were told how to build in microscopic detail. The tabernacle in the wilderness was movable, but now it was time to build a permanent structure. For seven years, the site was filled with busy workers who cleared the area. The bricks or stones were prepared elsewhere, so no hammers, axes or iron tools were used on site. The furniture that was used in the sanctuary was also prepared elsewhere and brought to the site. When it was finally finished, it was a magnificent structure with spacious courts, magnificent approaches and carved cedar and polished gold. The site chosen for the temple was Mount Moriah, where Abraham had shown his faithfulness and obedience in being willing to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice. Today, the site still holds immense significance for the three Abrahamic faiths of Judaism, Islam and Christianity. The early years of Solomon's reign went really well. His land spread from the borders of Egypt and Philistia to the Euphrates River, and many kings came from afar, and he was able to witness about the providence of God. The blessings of God were conditional on obedience to his commands, and one of these was that the king should not take on more than one wife. However, trusting in his own wisdom, Solomon went into an agreement with the king of Egypt and took his daughter as a wife. From a human point of view, this looked like a good agreement, as it strengthened the ties between the countries, and he was able to convert her to his faith. Rationalizing economic benefits for the potential conversion of a wife he shouldn't have been with anyway wasn't a one-off and Solomon entered into many of these alliances with other nations and kings. This had a demoralizing effect on him and he was soon in complete apostasy and open rebellion against God. He even went as far as to set up shrines to foreign gods at the foot of this mountain, the Mount of Olives. However, God was not done with him and he continued to woo him and thankfully at the end of his life, he repented, turned around and had sweeping reforms in Israel. He gave some wise counsel in his later years and one of these we find in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse one, where he implores others to remember their creator in the days of their youth. Speaking with hindsight, he tells others to have foresight that a life lived with God is the best life. If only he hadn't forgotten God during his older years and stayed faithful his whole life. Today, God is looking for men and women who will give him their best years and remember the Creator in the days of their youth. And even if we don't, God always accepts us when we turn back to him with genuine repentance like Solomon.